What's happening to LG OLED TVs in 2024? The numbers are in, and LG's OLED TV growth has stopped. Are consumers no longer excited by OLED? They fired their CEO, replaced a bunch of executives. But what does this mean for TV buyers in 2024? Hit it! That's what I'm talking about! Welcome to the FOMO show about TV technology and home theater news. This week, it's about LG's TV future, struggling to be profitable and stay relevant. It's being squeezed on one end by Samsung Display and the other by the Chinese competitors like Hisense and TCL. Their aging OLED lineup is not enough. What new and exciting features are we to expect from LG TVs in 2024? Because they did win 12 CES Innovation Awards for their OLED TVs. Speaking of the competition, Samsung is at it again, battling Dolby. This time, they're taking on Dolby Atmos with an open source competitor, and they have the backing of Google. We also talk about ratings 10-month update to their TV longevity, durability, reliability test, and oh so much more on today's FOMO show. And today's video is brought to you by WhoKeys. Trying to build a PC on a budget but don't know where to buy your Windows 10 software on the cheap? WhoKeys to the rescue. Use my code SF20 and immediate discount. At the bottom of this order where it says code card, to the right is the product key you need to activate Windows. So copy this long number, then go to the Windows menu and click on settings. In the settings menu at the bottom, select update and security. Select activation, then select change product key, paste what you copied from WhoKeys, click next, click activate, and you're done. You can download a copy of Windows 11 Pro with my discount code SF20 and BAM. And we start with this headline, LG Display keeps shaking in search of business transformation. <laughs> yeah, that shakeup is real. They're transferring and replacing different executives, but specifically the CEO has been replaced by a more successful executive from other divisions in the LG conglomerate conglomerate. In this case, they brought in the head of LG Innotech to do maybe some magic at LG Display because frankly, LG Display is just not doing a good job at all at staying profitable. For example, during the 2020-21 pandemic and so forth, LG Display decided, you know what, we're all in on OLED. So they invested a lot of money into an expansion, the Paju plant, right? OLED is the future. And so they built out capacity enough to make 10 million units of OLED TV panels for shipment to everyone. Sony, Panasonic, Samsung even. Anyone that wants to buy an OLED display panel from LG Display, there's 10 million available units. Well, in 2021, they were really excited because, you know, it looked like it hit 60%. They thought the growth would continue to go up. But instead, this past year, capacity was barely above 50%. And it doesn't look like it will expand that much further. So they built out, what is it? Uh, Field of Dreams, you build it, they will come. They built it, no one came. And so this is a problem. Now they have underutilized capacity. There's way too much capacity. Well, that investment is done. The tooling is done. They would love to build 10 million units a year and sell it, but there's no buyers. And so this new CEO is coming in to address the issue because now the losses have been mounting for six straight quarters. This is not sustainable, obviously. So what do we expect? Who is this guy? And that's what we're going to talk about today is this new CEO. What's his background? What do we think he's going to do or what should he do or what do we expect him to do at LG Display? And remember, LG Electronics, the one that actually makes the TVs, the mother company, so to speak, they're kind of limited by what LG Display can sell them. For example, MLA. If LG Display did not incorporate MLA last year, LG Electronics can't make TVs with MLA. So LG Display determines the future of LG OLED TVs. And in this case, we have questions like, well, is there going to be an MLA on the C-Series next year? Is there going to be MLA on an 83-inch? So we're going to talk about that as well. Which takes us to this headline, which is very specific. 
LG Display, the biggest task of business restructuring is large OLED. And when they say large OLED, it means TV panels. So you have capacity to build 10 million TV panels and you're selling half. What to do? This new CEO has a big problem because on the one hand, he wants to make more money or rather being profitable and then investing where he can to increase sales revenue without increasing the cost of R&D, future advancements. I mean, it's it's a fine balancing act. If you don't invest in the future, you're going to have an old, old technology years from now. But if you invest too much now, you're already losing money. When does the bleeding stop? He was brought in to increase profitability now. And that means he's going to cut costs, which means, and this is where it gets to affect you all. If he cuts costs at LG Display, that means LG Electronics, the one that makes LG TVs, they're not going to have access to the best OLED technology because LG Display is cutting costs. They're not investing in the future. So maybe next year they have some MLA stuff ready to go, right? Because they developed that years ago. But three years from now, LG Display right now is focused on turning things around, which means cost cutting, cost cutting. So they're going to take the low-hanging fruit. The low-hanging fruit right now is MLA. That's available. The question is, will MLA make it to C4 series. There's some good news, but I'm going to temper that good news with some reality. Beginning with the CES Innovation Awards for LG OLED TVs. LG OLED TVs have already been awarded 12 Innovation Awards for 2024. I know, right? We're still in 2023, but there are 12 awards. And we have an idea of what those awards are about, and we're going to talk about it in a second. But that's the good news, right? That means, hey, LG OLED TVs, something's popping, something different than last year. What is it? Well, we'll start with getting a bump in their gaming features, right? 144 hertz. That was a leak on the AMD site. And here we go. Flat panels HD kind of broke this story. And right here, 144 hertz VRR over HDMI. And that to me isn't a big deal, by the way, because we have two things we have to consider. First of all, the TVs that do have quote unquote 144 hertz as a spec, not working too well. That includes Samsung, right? So Samsung TVs, Hisense TVs, and TCL TVs with 144 plugged into a PC running an NVIDIA card not working well at all. So in this case, if LG can get it to work next year, they might be ahead of the game. And part of the reason is, even though the panel is capable of doing 144 hertz refresh, the SOC, the TV's processor, not up to snuff. For example, Hisense and TCL, they're still using MediaTek's older chip, barely able to handle 144. That's why it's not doing a good job. And on Samsung's side, well, they have 144, but it's communication with the NVIDIA GPU, not going so well either. People are getting dropouts. So let's just say for now, the 144 hertz capable TVs are still not very usable in that mode. And this only affects PC gamers, right? Console gamers, doesn't matter. PC gamers who want to go 144, no TVs really do it well. So LG is addressing that niche. It's not like if you're selling a million TVs. Of that million, how many are buying the TV based on the 144? less than half a percent, if that. And so I think they're kind of off base, but you know what? This will get them innovation award. That's fine. The big news though is down here, if you go scroll down a bit and what they notice is, so you have these two panels, a C4 and a G4. And what they noticed is that the C4 on the left has a different coding than the G4 on the right. Now, why is this coding important? MLA. Now, this is speculation, right? So I know Thought Panels HD does not have any inside scoop. They're just saying that just based on the coding, it appears that maybe the C4 does not have MLA. And I want to address that specifically based on my feeling as well, whether or not it has MLA. So there are two arguments, one against and one for MLA. Against MLA is this. Specifically, who is this new CEO, right? LG Innotech CEO is now the head of LG Display. His background would indicate that unless MLA is already ready to go on the C4, it's not going to be on the C4. He is not going to spend another dime to get MLA on the C4 if it isn't already there. Meaning, 
if in 2023, LG Display didn't already have an MLA version for the C4 ready to go, he's not going to invest another penny to make it work because his job is to cut costs, right? MLA and the C4 may or may not sell more TVs, but for sure, it'll cost more money if it's not already there. So that's the argument against MLA being on the C4. But the argument for MLA being in the C4 is this. If LG Display has already been planning with the last CEO to implement MLA on the C4 before the arrival of this CEO, costs, sunk cost, right? It's ready to go. He's not going to stop it. He'll go, okay, if you guys have plans for it, that's fine. Well, what about the different panel coatings, right? C4, G4, C4 has a different coating. In my opinion, I don't think it's a big deal. I think that coating is another feature that separates the C4 from the G4. Not so much that the coating is somehow connected to the MLA. I think it's separate and apart from MLA in a sense that C4 could have MLA, just lack the anti-glare coating of the G4. G4, more expensive, maybe a better coating. C4, less expensive, a cheaper coating. I don't think the two are necessarily intertwined. And Fat Panels HD is also speculating that C4 may not have MLA. They don't know either. It's just the coating differences make them suspicious. But I'm hoping that LG Display already had, in fact, planned for the C4 to get the MLA because if it doesn't, and this is huge, Think about it, right? In spring, in summer, while the old CEO was in place, he knew, he saw that the S90C from Samsung outperformed the C3. Like the performance margin was huge in terms of brightness, vibrancy, specular highlights, average picture level, just everything about the S90C outperformed the C3 because the C3 did not have MLA in 2024. If the C4 continues to lack this MLA, the S90 successor, S90D, will further destroy it because the S90C was the same price, if not less expensive than the C3. Well, next year, it's going to be similarly same price or less expensive. The question then is, what will we expect to see at CES 2024? Will MLA be on the C4? Because I don't think the 144 hertz will make an impact at all on the sales of the C4 or the G4, frankly. I don't think they needed it. I mean, yes, I know PC gamers would love it, but how many more sales will that constitute, right? Not much more. The big deal is MLA on the 83-inch size and on the C4. My prediction, I'm an optimist, I think it will be on the C4, and maybe that's why it's going to get an innovation award, because maybe it's a different version of the MLA, maybe a less expensive version to allow the C4 to be priced competitively to take on Samsung's S90C, S89C, or next year S90D, S80D, QD OLED third generation now. So tell me in the comments below, do you predict that in 2024, the C4 will have MLA. I think it will. Now, as bad as LG Display did last year, Samsung Display went the opposite way, trending up. So well, in fact, the Samsung Display promoted 10 vice presidents. And of those 10, right, two vice presidents were directly involved with QD OLED. So as we know, QD OLED, big hit big sales hit. And then one executive director was promoted because also of his involvement with QD OLED. And this goes to what we were talking about. Samsung took a big risk. Samsung Display took a big risk several years back, I'd say three years ago, when it announced, we are done with LCD TVs, no more. Everything, all new innovations, as far as TVs are concerned, will be focused on QD OLED. We're going to invest billions, right? 10 billion, 11 billion over the next few years. And that shocked everyone. Their pivot was so extreme. No one expected it. Paid off, right? All that sunk cost in 2021, 2022, paid off in 2023 
moving forward, it will continue to pay off. And they're continuing to invest in QD OLED as their next gen solution. It's so effective that they shelled their QNED, their QNED solution, right? The quantum dot nano LED, or instead of using OLED blue as their lighting structure, they would be able to use micro LED or nano LED blue, but they're like, you know, why are we beating ourselves up with super advanced technology when this semi-advanced technology is doing well enough? So they have a huge head start over LG Display. And LG Display had a chance to do that years ago when they were actually profitable six quarters ago. They didn't do it because they had nothing lined up, right? They were kind of complacent with the leadership of OLED. They were thinking, oh, the future is so bright. Everyone's going to jump on the W OLED bandwagon, not seeing that QD OLED be such a big hit. So I think next year, it'll be okay. LG Display, LG Electronics, the, the whole W OLED thing in 2024 should be fine. But 2025, 2026, with this new CEO who is in charge of cost cutting and just improving the manufacturing efficiency, supply chain efficiency. I mean, that's what he's in charge of now. Is he going to invest in the future development of the latest and best for W OLED? I don't think so. I think he's going to conclude, you know what? W OLED is fine. Our problem is we have excess manufacturing. Either we sell off our equipment or find new clients by lowering our price. And that actually may be the genius move is how can we improve efficiency and lower our prices by another 20%, make it impossible for QD OLED to outsell us in terms of pricing because the S90C to be priced at the same or less than the C3 this year, it's unbelievable. So moving forward, LG Display needs to drop their prices across the board by 15% at least to be competitive, at least on a cost basis so that other TV makers would choose to buy W OLED rather than QD OLED. Sticking with Samsung, they're doing something else innovative in the audio space, spatial audio, taking on Dolby Atmos. And this headline is Samsung and Google have developed a Dolby Atmos. Atmos alternative, right? So spatial audio, 3D audio, it all means the same thing. Maximizing movie immersion with surround sound that's up, down, in front, behind, all that good stuff. And right now, Dolby Atmos is the name. Now, I know DTSX is out there, but both of those require some kind of a licensing fee paid to someone, right? Well, Samsung and Google are saying, wait, let's make this open license, open source, so anyone could jump in and develop it and not have to pay anyone anything. And I love it. I want competition. Unfortunately, the name is not so compelling. The new audio technology is known as Immersive Audio Model and Format, IAMF. Could you think of a more awkward name? Look, Dolby Atmos. It's simple. The word Atmos has no meaning. It's easy to say. How about Samsung Immerso or the Immerso format, right? Just make it easy. I mean, I-A-M-F, this does not make it an easy sell as far as marketing the thing. But you know what? If it's free, it's me, I guess. It's just a matter of getting enough people on board. And Netflix, with its massive, massive number of users, you know they're paying a huge license to Dolby Atmos. I think Netflix would be a great first client. The question is, how easy is it to upgrade your firmware on all the TVs to decode this Immerso format? I'm going to call it Immerso because I cannot either say Immersive Audio Model and Format or IMF. Neither of those rolls off the tongue. So for now, we'll call it the Immerso format. Hey, give me some suggestions. What would you call this new open source Dolby Atmos alternative? And I love this headline, the stress of a new TV. Now the article itself is fine. We're talking about, oh, how stressful it is to go from your old TV to a new TV because you're so used to all the different outputs and inputs of your old TV and the new ones don't share those same old analog inputs and outputs, right? So the new TV, you gotta be used to the HDMI and the optical and the Bluetooth and all that stuff. But his true regret at the end is what caught my eye. He says, truthfully, my biggest hurdle was getting over my buyer's remorse of not having gone bigger. What I tell you, right? You buy a TV, you're loving it, and then he sees someone else with a 77-inch TV. He got the 65-inch Sony OLED. He's like, oh, 
should have gotten a 77 inch. And that's what we talk about. Buy the largest TV that will fit in your budget. Then you know, at least size will never be regret. Now later, of course, he rationalizes, oh, I love my 65 inch, but what's he gonna say? Honey, can we turn the 65 for a more expensive 77, right? I mean, at this point, bite the bullet, accept it, move on. But before you guys have bitten the bullet, if you have a choice, get the largest TV you can, even if it's an extra 100 or 200, you will then be completely satisfied with the size and you're not gonna say, oh, should have gone slightly bigger. And in this case, the 77 inch is the new 65 inch. Keep that in mind. Lastly, who doesn't love ratings, exhaustive and exhausting TV reviews, specifically their durability and longevity test. And what I love about this update is that it's not just OLED burn-in. LCD TVs are also not doing so well, right? So OLED, you got some image retention, AKA burn-in, but it's actually more tolerable than the increased DSE on the LCD TVs. We're talking about banding, we're talking about discoloration. So as annoying as burn-in is, the increased DSE on the LCD TVs are even worse. So at the end of the day, this is what I'm telling you guys. Yeah, OLED may have a risk of burn-in, but your LCD TVs are not trouble-free either. Get the best TV image quality that you want at the size you can afford, and you're okay because all this fear about OLED burn-in, well, with a mini LED LCD TV, you may have other issues. Vertical banding, splotchiness, I mean, just the blooming got worse over time, right? There is no perfect TV. Choose the one that looks good today, take care of the TV, hope for the best. Now, tell me, does this ratings result after 10 months change your mind about OLED? Would you consider OLED next year? Let me know in the comments below. And until next time, stop the FOMO. That's what I'm talking about. Wait. Okay now, from the beginning. Hit it, boys.